question. What the heck is surface tension? How can we explain the physics behind it? Using ordinary milk and a regular plate and some food coloring, pour the milk onto the plate until it is about full. Place drops of food coloring onto the surface of the milk. Notice the food coloring flows because it is less dense than the milk. Place a drop of regular dish soap onto the surface of the milk. Wow. There must be some kind of natural tension or presence that is preventing the food coloring from spreading upon the surface of the milk. We will refer to this presence as surface tension. Let's build some apparatus that will hypothetically be propelled across the surface of a liquid when the soap is introduced into the system. You'll need some scissors and cardboard, a plate with water in it, some dish soap, Red Bull and Doritos. Cut a boat out that looks like this, or better. Place some dish soap into the spoon, use a fork and grab a drop of the dish soap. Place it just in the back of the boat onto the water. So what exactly is happening? In a complicated way, the water molecules can be thought of as spheres held together to give a body of liquid by intermolecular forces hydrogen bonds. The hydrogen bonds between the molecules are strong enough to give the water a surface tension. When soap molecules are introduced, they squeeze between the water molecule spheres, increasing the distance between them. With this increased distance, the intermolecular forces are weakened and become less efficient in keeping the surface tension. Soap molecules squeeze between water molecules because of their hydrophilic and hydrophobic constituents. The hydrocarbon tail of each molecule will push its way between the water molecules to escape the polar nature of water. The ionic head of each molecule will happily stay in the body of water, and so it is the hydrocarbon tail alone that increases the distance between the water molecules. Now, let's run some tests and see how we can control this natural wonder. We've made three boats. Boat 1, short reservoir. Boat 2, a long reservoir. And boat 3, a T-shaped reservoir. travels approximately 9 inches before decelerating. The boat travels a slow speed for a short distance and then appears to accelerate. Let's see that again. The boat easily travels 11 inches and only stops once it hits the edge of the plate. Similar to boat 2, boat 3 easily travels 11 inches and only stops once it hits the edge of the plate. It too appears to have midway acceleration. This may be due to the fact that the longer reservoir acts as a gas tank and slows the detensioning. Out of pure curiosity, we decided to fill a bathtub and test the limits on the distance of boat 2. We estimate it traveled a good three-quarter bathtub length before giving out. The obtained momentum carries the boat all the way down to the end. Thank <laughs> you.